Well, as you can imagine, there are many challenges. I think the, the ones that we hear about the most and that we think about the most are how to predict the demand for our drugs, for the drugs that are being produced. So we, we call the, the, um, the predictability of demand uh, to be very uncertain uh, because so many things can affect the amount of drug that you need, um, when you're going to need it, uh, at what scale uh, it needs to be produced at, uh, and what quantity uh, and quality uh, of that product you're going to need. Today we encourage manufacturers to consider more flexible manufacturing systems in order to respond to the demand, what we call demand uncertainty, in the ability to forecast how much drug you're going to need, when you're going to need it, and at what scale it needs to be produced. What we mean by that is the more flexible your operation can be, the ability to stop it, to restart it, to change it, to switch to a different drug, gives you many more options as a scheduler and a production manager and an operation to respond to changes in demands for any one particular drug. Well, it's clear because we are, uh, biomanufacturing is in an FDA regulated environment. Uh, everyone who's endeavoring to develop a bioprocess must incorporate uh, CGMP compliance into the design of the process such that when it is ultimately scaled up and put into GMP manufacturing, the process will conform to accepted guidelines, current guidelines for the production of, of uh, products destined for, for human use. So incorporating the GMPs into the design of processes such that they will successfully scale into GMP manufacturing and produce the right product quality and the right quantity uh, is critical to success. Well, in perfusion processes, you're feeding the bioreactor culture continuously. So the cultures are not being intoxicated by their waste products. They're, they're being bathed in high concentrations of the nutrients that they need. So they're growing at a very high viability uh, and usually growing at very high growth rates. So their productivity in general is higher, which leads to a higher volumetric productivity of the bioreactor in terms of grams of product per liter of reactor per time let's say per hour, compared to batch operations. In batch operations, of course, as the cells grow, they accumulate waste products, they're burning up and, and consuming nutrients, and therefore their rate of growth uh, and their viability and their ability to produce the drug is slowly changing and, and, and slowing down. So the overall bat, uh, volumetric productivity of a batch reactor uh, can be lower compared to perfusion in that, in that case. Well, it's a hard, it's a hard issue to, to address because contract manufacturers obviously want to get the product, want to produce the product and get the manufacturing campaign done so that they can get paid. And the longer time that it takes to do process development, um, the longer it takes before they in fact can finish the manufacturing and ultimately get paid for the large, larger manufacturing operations. Um, on the flip side, the customer doesn't necessarily want to invest a lot of process development early on because they want to get into the clinic quickly so they can start their clinical trials as early as possible. And number two, they can later come back and optimize the process further when they're in phase two uh, and make changes uh, at that point. Uh, so in that sense, or in that way, they can avoid spending a lot of time and money early on in process development before the clinic, get into the clinic quickly, 
and then come back and do more process optimization after phase one slash two uh, before they then go to phase three.